Bun. Yes, we can see your uh, screen. It's okay. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I would like to introduce myself. My okay. name is Dr. S. M. Astan. I am aquaculture specialist, aquatic animal health specialist, particularly. I am from Andhra Pradesh, India. So before going to my presentation, I would like to say something about the Indian aquaculture. So particularly when Vanami has introduced in our country, up to 10 years from the 1991 to 10 years, our culture is very good. There is no any kind of problems faced by our farmers. But later, there are so many problems are there in India, particularly in Andhra Pradesh. If you see in Andhra Pradesh, 70% of the Indian culture has uh, 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 cultured in only Andhra Pradesh. 70% of total Indian production is placed in Andhra Pradesh only. Remaining 30% have spread in different states of our country. So in recent time, there are so many problems has faced by our aquaculture uh, farmers, particularly uh, quality of the sea. So uh, because uh, farmers could not get the quality of the sea uh, due to uh, Poor, poor quality, the seed, when we have stocking into the ponds, uh, after 10 days or one month of time only, they will be affected with uh, some kind of viruses, particularly WSSV, white spot syndrome virus. That is the main problem in our country. If you see in rainy season, this white spot syndrome is uh, very common in every form in every place of India, every place of, uh, every state of India. So before that, uh, this problem is not here, the, not there. So culture is very good. The seed is also very good because uh, some hatchery people could not follow the uh, uh, proper biosecurity measures. That is one of the reasons behind the poor seed and uh, they have running the so many cycles with the uh, same brood stock. That is also one of the problem. And after that, uh, uh, very recent years, uh, uh, EHP is also one of the problem. EHP is also one of the problem. Enterocytogen hepatopenia. So uh, due to this also, the culture has uh, uh, damaged uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Maston, uh, yes. can you, yeah, we cannot see your pages. Can you, yeah, you turn to another page. We just see the first page. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. We, we see your first page now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Just, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, thank you. Now, now I go to the topic. Uh, uh, okay. Our topic is uh, uh, shrimp culture management in rainy season, particularly with special reference to the uh, Vitopinia swanami. So during the rainy season, several changes will occur in grow-out shrimp ponds. Heavy rains so during the rainy season have direct and indirect effect on the shrimp production and the shrimp health also. So this will be discussed in this paper, in this presentation. So water quality parameters will be changed and shown its impact on the shrimp culture. So direct effects of rain on physical, chemical and the biological factors. So when rain is there, Definitely, it will affect on the physical factors of the uh, particular water body, chemical factors of the water body, and the biological factors of the cultured ponds. So, physical factors include the temperature 
and uh, sound and uh, winds or waves so temperature is the most important uh, parameter uh, which play important roles in metabolic activity of the individual animal if you see in rain water the temperature ranges from uh, 5 to 6 degree centigrade rain water contains the uh, 5 to 6 degree uh, celsius temperature that rain water comes into the pond water so the pond water temperature has decreased decreases 3 to 5 degrees 3 to 5 degrees than the normal water so when temperature has decreases decreases, uh, decreases uh, definitely it will have its influence on the uh, feeding uh, ability of the shrimp feeding ability of the shrimp so if one degree temperature reduces it will influence it the uh, 5 to 5 5 to 10% of the intake of the feed so the animals will reduce the uh, feed by 5 to 10% so they, they are uh, not able to take the much feed uh, when uh, uh, rain is going on so in that period you can reduce the uh, feed also by uh, 30 to 50% so during the uh, uh, rain uh, all the animals in the pond uh, go to the bottom because in the bottom uh, temperature is somewhat higher than the surface water so they will go to the bottom of the pond and infiltrate into the uh, soil and the sludge also so there oxygen problem may be arises oxygen problem may be arises due to the huge population which have aggregated at the bottom of the pond so that is also one of the problem by which the depletion of the oxygen will take place so by which harmful gases like uh, h2s and other gases will be uh, developed in the uh, culture ponds it will uh, badly affect on the health of the uh, cultured animals so during the rainy time uh, no diseases occur but after rain when the temperature is increases the bacteria and the virus can be proliferate rapidly and it will cause infection to the uh, cultured animals so this is regarding about the temperature when 1 degree temperature decreases so definitely it will have its influence uh, on the intake feed of the cultured animals the animals will be not have the appetite and in that way they will reduce the taking of the feed by 5 to 10% so second factor is there that is known as the sound and waves sound and waves so rain makes the certain kinds of sound which causes the stress to the shrimp which causes to the stress to the shrimp by which they will go to the bottom of the pond they go to the bottom of the pond so when surface uh, uh, water receive the rain water so it makes the some sound due to that sound uh, the shrimps uh, become uh, stressed and when they become stressed they go to the or they migrate to the, to the bottom of the pond when winds intensity is high uh, shrimp also prone to the stress so when high intensity uh, waves touches the uh, this dikes uh, uh, dike from uh, 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 dike uh, clay particles and the soil particles come to the uh, pond water with rain water so it makes uh, muddy color the color of the water has changed changed and uh, in this way uh, bottom becomes uh, sorry water becomes more turbid so there is a thin layer is present between the where water and soil meet water and soil meet so that uh, thick layer is uh, disappear due to the rain water 
So in that way, uh, toxic gases may be generated and it will come into the pond water. So this uh, toxic gases uh, will show its effect on the health of the cultured animals. So this is regarding about the sound and uh, waves uh, during the time of rain. So apart from that, uh, water pH. pH is a most important parameter, important parameter in aquaculture system. So atmospheric CO2 react with the uh, rainwater, rainwater to form the carbonic acid. The rainwater uh, slightly acidic in nature due to much rain, <coughs> sorry, due to much uh, rainwater, pH is, a, pH is decreases from 6.5 to 6.7. So while pond water uh, pH is about 7.5 to 8.5. If you see normal pond water contains the uh, 7.5 to 8.5 units. But when rain rains are going on, when the pH levels are getting down in pond water due to the acidic nature of the uh, rain water, rain water. So it will <clears throat> harm to the cultured animals and uh, it will uh, subsequently uh, H2S yes, gases will be also increased in the pond water. So appetite of shrimps also decreases. Appetite of the shrimps also decreases. Uh, and uh, shrimps will prone to the diseases. Shrimps will be prone to the diseases. To maintain the optimum pH, you should apply the agricultural line. Agricultural line, you can add to the water, then pH will levels will be increases uh, uh, to the normal level means 7.5 to 8.5. So by which we can maintain the uh, optimum pH levels in the cultured ponds. After that, to dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen play important role in shrimp culture system. DO levels above 5 uh, ppm is very good. Uh, you should be maintain the uh, above 5 ppm of oxygen levels in cultured ponds. If BO levels uh, below the uh, 5 ppm, sometimes uh, uh, the ponds uh, shrimp will be uh, prone uh, stress. And sometimes uh, if getting down low, uh, below 3, uh, sometimes uh, the shrimp population will be dying. So production mainly depending upon the uh, availability of the oxygen in the cultured pond. The source of oxygen in the cultured ponds are two ways. Number one is the photosynthesis by planktons. The photosynthesis will be carried by the planktons by using the sunlight by which uh, the pond water get uh, oxygen. That oxygen has utilized by the cultured animals. So second source is the uh, mechanical aerators. So mechanically, we can arrange the aerators in the pond in different places. So by which also we can mechanically, artificially generate the oxygen when there are rains. So it is a emergency uh, arrangements. So during the time of uh, rains, there is no uh, photosynthesis activity. In that way, the oxygen levels initially increases but uh, after that, uh, the rain has uh, yeah. Yeah, progress uh, and uh, uh, oxygen levels are getting down. So if the pond depth is very high, then the five feet or six feet, uh, so some uh, toxic gases will be arises. Toxic gases will be arises. So maintenance of the good EVO levels are very important. Uh, for the success of the initial culture. Uh, uh, then salinity. Salinity is a most important uh, factor in shrimp culture. Actually, rainwater does not contain the ions and uh, 
minerals. So uh, when rain is uh, going going on, salinity will be decreases immediately. Salinity levels have decreases immediately due to the due to this uh, halocline situation. Halocline condition is arises. Halocline condition is arises. Halocline means uh, salinity difference uh, in water layers of the pond. So halocline is a condition which uh, differ from one, salinity differ from one layer to the another layer. So such condition is known as the halocline uh, condition. So this could be prevailed during the rainy time. During the rainy time. So it will cause to the culture animals and it is better to run aerators during the rainy time, during the rainy time. So when rain is going on, you can run the aerators for proper mixing of the water. So by which we can maintain the uh, same uh, condition of the salinity throughout the uh, pond uh, water pond water and the halocline condition also depending upon the DO and the temperature. So halocline condition is also uh, related to the amount of DO and uh, temperature uh, intensity. Low salinity water favors the growth of the brood green algae. algae. So uh, salinity if it decreases uh, beyond the optimum levels so, uh, by which uh, algae, harmful algae levels are increases in the pond water, it will be harm to the our culture uh, animals. Then alkanity. So alkanity is a one of the most important uh, parameter. So during the time of rain, alkanity levels uh, will decreases. Not only that, in on the bottom, nitrification process will also occur due to the presence of nitrifying bacteria. So this process is known as the nitrification. Nitrification. So in the pond soil uh, is acidic in nature. It increases an uh, acidic in nature, and uh, by which uh, alkalinity is decreases. Alkalinity is decreases. So when uh, due to bacterial action. Organic matter decomposes and releases ammonia. So ammonia levels are also increases. One ppm ammonia decomposes by the action of bacteria. It can utilize the 7.14 ppm alkanity. Alkanity has decreased. Alkanity has decreased. So one ppm ammonia decomposed by the bacteria to which 7.14 ppm alkanity has decreased. So decomposition rate is high and uh, uh, the alkanity level is also decreases. Alkanity level is also decreases. Then hardness. So what do you mean by hardness? Calcium, magnesium, iron concentration is known as the hardness due to the dilution of the rainwater. Hardness may be also getting down during the time of rains. So significantly. So mainly calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium bicarbonates and sulfates and chlorides concentration has decreased significantly. So when the rain is going on. So apart from that, plankton crash. So plankton crash is also one of the uh, issue during the rainy uh, rain. So lack of sunlight uh, decrease in the salinity, temperature, pH and the minerals and increase in the turbidity will cause the plankton crash, plankton crash. So actually during the rain, lack of sunlight there is no photosynthesis. And uh, in addition to that, uh, temperature is decreases, pH levels are decreases, uh, mineral concentration is also decreases, uh, decreases uh, and uh, turbidity levels are increases. 
So due to which uh, the plant panels are tra crashed and, uh, uh, and changes the uh, pH also, changes the pH, pH also. So due to the plant crash, gill problem may be also arises in shrimp. So when plantain has crashed, so due to crashing of these plantains and uh, due to turbidity, so uh, this uh, could be uh, make the problem of gills due to which brown gill and black gill problems may be arises. So they can clog the gills of the cultured animals. Then we go to the turbidity. So it is quite natural in rainy season, the turbidity of the water increases due to the runoff from the surrounding water, plankton crash, and the water become coffee or soil color. So if you see during the rainy time, the runoff has come to the pond water. Uh, in that water, uh, there are so many components are present, uh, soil particles, uh, and other clay particles are also and uh, uh, plankton crashes also. Uh, so due to this uh, uh, color of the water becomes uh, coffee color or sometimes uh, soil color, soil color. So due to which uh, the respiratory uh, gill problem may be arises uh, sometimes uh, respiratory problem also experienced by the cultured animals. So sometimes so the turbidity levels are increased so due to the suffocation, the cultured animals so shrimps will be dying. So this is all about the turbidity. Now minerals. So minerals are very important for shell development after molting for the formation of the new shell. New shell. So they, uh, they need the uh, this kind of minerals, particularly sodium, magnesium, calcium, potassium, chlorides, and sulfates. So due to the dilution, huge amount of water coming to the pond water. So the dilution has taken place and the concentration of the minerals has decreases, decreases due to the rain water. So minerals levels are also getting down when uh, uh, there is a heavy rains. Then biological factors. As I, uh, as, uh, I already uh, told you, uh, plankton crash is there uh, due to which uh, the organic load may be accumulated at the pond bottom. So decrease the green algae population. So green algae population is very essential uh, for uh, natural feed for the uh, cultured animals. So that uh, population may be decreases due to the uh, different uh, uh, changes occurring in the pond water and uh, it will increase the microcystis. Due to the organic load, so the population of the microcystis, blue green algae population has increased. Then water color will be changed from normal to black and coffee color, coffee color. The harmful bacterial population will be increased in the pond water, particularly heterotrophic bacteria, heterotrophic bacteria. So after two days of rainfall, toxic gases like ammonia and H2S will be increased in the pond water. Now feed management. So during the time of rain, heavy rain or, or heavy rain, you can stop the feeding. It is good, but uh, uh, if rain is not that much of uh, high, so you can give the uh, 30 to 50 percent. So it is better to stop the feeding. If uh, rain is not that much of high, so you can give the 30 to 50 percent of uh, feed. So before that, you check the check trick. Check tray observation is very important before giving the feed during the rainy season. So stop the overfeeding. Do not give the over, do not feed over to the animals because 
feed is uh, wasting waste by which uh, uh, it can uh, it can uh, damage or uh, pollute the pond bottom so diseases so as i told you so when uh, water is not good so in uh, organic loads are very high in such cases uh, vibro loads are increases and the immunity of the animal is decreases outbreak of wssp is also very uh, uh, common during the rainy season uh, we have observed during this season also in our andhra so many uh, uh, culture ponds are uh, infected with this wssp due to low temperature high ph and uh, uh, this uh, kind of rain uh, rain rains then uh, brown and black ill disease will occur due to high turbidity clay particles uh, and uh, heavy metals uh, and uh, crash of algae algae so these are the visuals you have seen here uh, brown gill disease this is the black gill disease now recommendation recommended practices before the rain clean the clean and enlarge the drain channels outlets are there so you should be clean and enlarge the outlets properly and place the cal calcium carbonate bags on the walls so it is very important to put, to keep the calcium carbonate bags on the walls or dikes then uh, when it was raining uh, cacl2 dissolves and penetrate through the water walls uh, they come into the pond water and uh, it will helping to maintain the ph of the pond water is it clear now it is necessary apply the if necessary you can also apply the potassium permanganate at the rate of 100 kg per hectare 100 kg per hectare then uh, repair and compact the slopes of dikes it is also very important uh, then uh, keep the sand fill bags to avoid the erosions of the dikes so these are very common when heavy rains are there definitely uh, erosion of the dikes has take place due to that uh, erosion so uh, uh, the water will be exchanged between the uh, uh, neighboring ponds so it will cause some uh, contamination problems also then uh, before the rain ensure the all the uh, drains get a low surface drainage so surface drainage uh, should be you have uh, arranged Uh, before the rain and place the pvc pipes horizontally to drain out the excess water uh, to keep ready uh, aerators for the emergency then during the rainy time so drain uh, surface water the overflowing when ponds are overflowing then you should take off that water surface water it is very good if you removing surface water and the water level could be maintained uh, by which uh, animals will not go to from the pond so measure the ph in a devo continuously uh, if ph drops apply the calcium carbonate when ph levels are decreases uh, it is better to apply the calcium carbonate to make it uh, uh, to uh, increase in the ph levels uh, to the optimum levels uh, reduce the daily feed about 50 to 70% so during the rainy time you should avoid the feed it is or stop the feeding or it, you will provide 50 to 70 uh, you can reduce the uh, 50 to 70% uh, and to maintain the devo about the five people so during the rain also we can maintain the vivo levels above the 5 ppm by 
running the aerators. Uh, uh, it is very good uh, by which we can avoid the uh, streams to undergo you know, stress conditions. Check the green algae population, whether they have any kind of green algae uh, population, you will also check it. After rain, rain, rain of the rain water from the surface of the pond, switch on the aerator. So aerator shaft continuously you can run, apply the line to the pond water by which we can improve the pH and alkalinity hardness, apply the sea salt by which we can be able to maintain the salinity and also apply the minerals, minerals like sodium, potassium and magnesium. They will help in to maintain the ionic concentration in the pond water. Then you should add the vitamin C in the feed at the rate of five grams per, per kg feed. And for emergency purpose, you can keep at your farm Devo boosters. Some Devo booster chemicals are there. Uh, if any emergency is arises and uh, you keep them at your farm site, so then it will be helping you to prevent the any kind of emergency due to the depletion of the oxygen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for your information and gave us a lot of knowledge about shrimp management in rainy season and let us learn a lot. Thank you very much. And now uh, we invite uh, Dr. Bing to give us some information about shrimp farm. Uh, Dr. Mazdan? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, hello, sir. Good evening, good evening. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Thanks, thanks for your useful presentation. Yes, you. Uh, you, gave, you provide a lot of uh, useful, useful um, information for the farmers during the rainy seasons. Of course, you know, uh, I would like to introduce some situation um, for the shrimp farming in China. You know, uh, during the May to June, Okay, the south of China, the survival rate for the shrimp farming for the enemy in the mud pond is only 20 to 30 percent. You know, the weather changes a lot. I think in South Asia, from Thailand, from Vietnam, Indonesia, India, in the same situation, the heavy rain. After that, we have got the sunny, the high temperature. The, the temperature in the mud pond is above. 36 degree. Okay, yeah. this is too bad for the shrimp farming. Okay, that's why the survival rate only 20 to 30 percent. But the worst <laughs> situation is, you know, now in the north of China, okay, you know, we are the temperate uh, country. Okay, after August, uh, August uh, for the mud pond, we, we won't stop NAPL because the temperature. When the October comes, the temperature only 10 plus. Okay, the water temperature is less than 20 degree. Okay, not suitable for the enemy farming. But the worst situation is, you know, the from this month, actually from uh, uh, middle of July until now, in the north of China, from Tianjin and uh, of course, uh, this is a Hebei province. The, the disease had the uh, outbreak again. So now we lost uh, more than 60% of shrimp in north of China. Okay, of course, uh, before we we try to persuade, we try to tell the, the farmers using some, you know, the animal health product to prevent the diseases, okay? Yeah. We try to, but you know, the, the farmers want to complete the ROI, which is the invest and the output. Okay, but they, for the farming all over the world, they want to make the money, they want to save the money. But uh, regret to see 
They saved some money for the animal health product, but they lost the whole farm. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have any time to restock again. Yes. Because the season. So, yeah. so this is too bad for me. Maybe uh, October or November, the price of the film in China will increase. Because yeah, yeah. You know, in China, we our demand is more than 2 million tons every year. So and uh, we uh, import from Avado, from India, from Vietnam, about 0.8 million tons every year. That means our production is uh, around 1.2 million tons. But this yeah. year, maybe much less than that. Okay? So, yeah, yeah. do you... Uh, you know, after the heavy rain, we try our best to reuse the, you know, the organic acid to detoxin. Because I, I'll get great, I think just, I saw you just now, just now you share the information after the heavy rain got the I'll get crash. Then after that, after two or three days, they, re, they decay, they release the toxins in the water, into the water. Then finally, we have the wet faces problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think in India, because we have plenty of uh, farmers and the customer from India, we have the same situation. Okay, after the algae crash, our way is using the uh, organic acid to detoxin. At the meantime, we change the water, but not 100% uh, or 50%. We gradually change the water 20% daily, okay, because the stream is under stress. If we change the too much water, the stream will be dry. Yeah. Okay. So at the meantime, we did use some uh, wet medicine. Okay. Yes, yes. We use some Chinese herb. Okay. At the meantime, we use some uh, bioacid to protect, to improve the immunity of the stream. So my question is, so after the algae crash, after the heavy rain, what 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 do you do in the in India? I mean, for the farmers, any advice or any opinion on this? Yes, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So after after the algae crash. What yeah. the, the farmers doing for the algae crash in India? Actually, sir, here uh, farmers are using after crash some biological preparations, natural biological preparations okay. with uh, rice bran, jaggery, and uh, yeast. They have fermented for uh, 48 hours. Okay. So then they are applying to the uh, pond. So again, they will develop in the plantings. But okay. uh, uh, it is not up to the 100%. So some extent, uh, it will be working to develop yeah. the plantings. Yes, I understand. Just now you mentioned that you are using the yeast product, yeah. right? Yeast product in China is the same. We, we, we use plenty of, you know, in China, we have plenty of uh, product which can improve the immunity. Yeah. Probiotic, probiotic, essential oil. Of course, uh, I see that one of product that has more and more people are using. Uh, to uh, to improve the the immunity at the meantime, of course, the bioacid can uh, improve the uh, efficiency of the feed. So that means that it can promote the digestion of lipid in the feed. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, in India, especially in uh, under the British, they have plenty of farmers. Okay, so <coughs> other than that, what product 
are the farmers using in India? For which for what? So, 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 so I mean, my, my, my question is actually not question. I think I, I like to learn the product which is the most popular in India market. As it is, there is no single product, sir. There are so many products are there. Uh, each product, uh, every time is not working. The conditions of the ponds are different. In the same form, uh, a product working in a uh, B pond, that product could not work in the C pond because of ecological difference. Yes, yes, understand. Because so, uh, the, the minerals, as uh, you know, the salinity. Uh, we is, can't blame is, the product. Yeah. We can't blame the product. The conditions are different. So actually, it is not a, uh, we cannot able to access the system up to the 100%. Yeah. So internally, what happening, we don't know. Exactly. So yeah. because of that, we can't say a particular product is used by the all the farmers. If you take, for example, white species syndrome, for white species syndrome, in one season, one product is effectively working against that. But if you use the same product for the next season, it will be fail. Yes. I totally agree. Father, you know the VP, VP is the Weber of Parahemolyticers para in yeah. China this year is very, very common. Okay. So we last year we used, uh, you know, the, uh, the product from uh, um, Sonoka, from the big company, you know, the from Andiso, but this year doesn't work at all, frankly to say. But using some essential oil, it works well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the shim farming is too complicated. Okay, so when the farmers uh, may uh, advise, so for the farmers, you the better try the product first. Then after that, if you see this works well, then you choose this, this product. So it's better at the mean at the beginning you use okay for the whole farm you are using the same product. So do you agree with my? Uh, opinion or my 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 sir to yes sir to, yes, you are right you are right you are right <laughs> okay thank you thank thank you doctors okay I think a little uh, uh will share share some more information for our audience okay okay thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. China, we are uh, <coughs> about acids and uh, you can make Amadeus in rainy season and he can anti stress or trim. And you can see when we are using that acid, it can promote the absorption and storage of fatty acid in capital pancreas of shrimp and promote liver transition. And bile acid also can promote the detoxification of the shrimp capital pancreas and repair the damage of the capital pancreas. So thereby improving the survival rate in the shrimp pond. And the dosage is about two to three gram per kilogram shrimp feed. And the Eucamia Omadis can promote the reproduction of beneficial bacteria in the intestine and uh, chlorogenic uh, acid can prevent the growth and uh, intestinal uh, reproduction of harmful bacteria. So it can balance the bacteria and promote the intestinal development and improve the health of intestinal and also has antioxidant effects, reduce the mortality of shrimp and caused by stress. So the dosage is about one gram to 
two gram per kilogram shrimp feed. And in China, you can see in the shrimp feed, uh, shrimp farm <clears throat> also continuous rain, rainy day every day and uh, unstable temperature. So they use uh, these two product and uh, you can see after the melanthic and uh, Eucamia omedes, and you can see the hepatopancreas is very clear and strong, and intestinal is also very strong. So this is uh, the uh, cases use of uh, bile acid and Eucamia omedes. And if you want to know more information and uh, want to know some knowledge about shrimp farming, you can also subscribe our YouTube channel, the channel Aquaculture Nutrition, and also can add my WhatsApp. Okay. And we will show you more information about shrimp farming, some knowledge about uh, how to prevent vibro and how to prevent EHP, and a lot of information. Okay, okay. Okay. Also, thanks for your time uh, attending our meeting and uh, thanks uh, Dr. Mastin and Dr. Bing's uh, information. Very professional and we learned a lot of knowledge about shrimp farming. And next time we will also show you more uh, knowledge about shrimp farming. You can follow us. Okay, sure, sure. And if you have any questions and problems with shrimp farming, you can leave the message in the uh, message box and we will answer your questions. Any problems and any questions? Ask uh, about um, Dr. Mason and Dr. Bain. And also can add my WhatsApp. Anyone hands up? Can hands up? So we, we, we can discuss any questions regardless the product or the method. If you want to learn the you know the method, the way to treat the diseases for the shrimp farming, uh, you know we have. Uh, 40 plus uh, sales manager from all for all over the world, from Ecuador, from India, Vietnam. If you want to learn anything, you can talk to uh, Jackie. You can talk to me also, the Dr. Mustang. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, we can communicate, we can exchange the ideas, uh, the way to treat the diseases. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Dr. Master, uh, since uh, our audience know any question, but I have uh, one, not questions. So, so could you please introduce the uh, mean diseases from uh, India for the shrimp farming? So, um, there are like the Weberio, like the EHP, you know, in, in China, now we are facing the wet faces, which is yeah. causing same, same. Yeah. the same, yeah, causing the, uh, causing bad every crash and the uh, Weberio parahemolytic curse, okay. We also facing the Hawaii, okay, this year. And uh, the worst situation is, you know, in the past five years, we, we seldom have the cases for the WSSV, but this year, but this year, we yeah. have a lot of farmers report to us. So they are facing the... WSSV, we choose the PL, we choose the, you know, the STF, which is a WSSV rate. But, uh, you know, we, they also treat the water before the, the, the farming. 
Finally, they're facing their tolerance this problem. So of course, our research institute, the university, of course, the company, we are trying to find out the reason why they see so many cases for the WSSV. Okay, is it due to the temperature, due to the heavy rain, or any other causes? Actually, there are two things are there. So number one is the temperature. Number two is the pH, high pH levels. And yeah, temperature is play, uh, temperature play important role. Generally, this problem comes only in rainy season and winter season. There is a, some connection is there with the temperature. Yeah. Yeah, this is possible. Yeah. <coughs> and there's a pH of blood fluctuation too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think this is a induced uh causes for the WSSV. Yeah. Because of fluctuation of the pH, because of the the temperature, you know, the change then cause the WSSV. So this is my opinion. You know, where I'm a, you know we have a collaborated with a Professor Oritin, uh you know the Rumi um up to hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know if uh, but the farmers lost this batch. That means they lost 2022. Because we are the temperate uh, uh, zoo. Okay, China is temperate zoo for the north of China. North of China. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Dr. Ben, it is uh, better to conduct the experiments in, uh, in uh, ponds instead of laboratory. The so, condition of condition of the pond is different from the laboratory uh, experiments. So I don't agree the experiments which conduct in the lab condition. Yes, I fully agree with you because the temperature in the pond is fluctuated every time. But in in our lab laboratory, it's same twenty six. 227 or 228 consistent. But the weather change, the temperature change for the mud pond. Okay. And at the meantime, maybe you know the, the virus live in the pond, the bottom of the pond. When the time when the uh, condition is suitable for the virus, they will produce very fast. Okay, this is possible reasons. <laughs> Actually, some of the Indian people uh, think that our heart, heart doctor, vibrios are uh, triggering channel? factor for causing infection of WSSV virus. Yes, yes. So in future, if you have any information uh, for the you know, for the dream farming, you can text to message to uh, Jackie, and yeah. uh, also uh, if you like, you can you can talk to me. We can exchange the idea. Yeah, yeah sure. To solve this problem for the farmers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is uh, better to develop one or two products for WS W white feces syndrome. Yes. Yeah. From, your, from your side. Yeah. So, so far, as we know, you know, the four reasons that can cause the wet faces uh, problem. The first, we real. Okay. Now we, 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 we confirm the VP is the main problem. Okay. The second is the EHP. I think uh, uh, almost, 
all the labs they can they they they, they can test the EHP. If EHP less than ten power three is safe, okay. And also you know the I think in future you will you will saw one papers you will see one papers which is focused on the fatty acid. So they, some of um, researchers they mentioned that you know the uh, wet faces caused by the fatty acid. Okay, so in future they will publish these papers. So I'm looking forward to see these papers. And uh, the last day the algae crash. Okay, after heavy rain. Okay, the sunny when we change the water. I think uh, you know the 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 algae crash will happen. Okay, after two or three days, then wet faces come. Okay, the toxin yeah. from algae, but not all the algae have the such kinds of toxins. Only few kinds of algae has. Okay, so in future, if if you have such kind of information, you you can talk to me. We can exchange, we can communicate. Sure, sure, sure. Sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anything you want to learn from uh, China about the shrimp farming, you can talk to me. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So taking any question from our audience or our farmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thanks for all your time and uh, thanks Dr. Mustang and thanks Dr. Bain. And that's all for today's uh, Zoom webinar. And if you want to know more information, you can subscribe our YouTube channel and add my WhatsApp. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marks. Thank you. Thank you. I have a friend uh, from uh, Karela University. Pardon? <laughs> I have an uh, ex colleague from yeah, yeah. Uh, Karela okay. University. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very nice. Someday, maybe we will see uh, face to face yeah. in somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Have a good okay. night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. You're singing, ma.